Hi, I'm Brett Contreras. In this video, I'm going to address something really, really important for strength coaches, personal trainers, physical therapists. Um, just you know, this is a, a very important topic, and it's on it's on lumbar, pelvic, hip functioning. And this is this this carries over to low back pain, you know, posture, uh, performance, power, speed, strength. Um, so it's, it's, it's incredibly important and I've been having a lot of success um, both with people that I work with as well as feedback I receive from around the world from people who have been implementing some of my methods and in this video I want to explain my rationale as to why this is going on. So here I've got a model and it's a, a skeletal model of the spine, the pelvis and the hips. So first let me go over ranges of motion here. This here is the hip, the hip joint, and this would be hip flexion, and this is hip extension. So, you know, you move the hips through hip flexion and hip extension when you squat, when you lunge, when you sprint, when you jump. All right, now, it, this is the lumbar spine, these lower five vertebrae in the spine. And the lumbar spine and the pelvis and the hip all work together. This is why they're called the lumbo-pelvic hip complex, because they all work together in a coordinated fashion. And you need to have proper lumbo-pelvic hip complex functioning for all sorts of reasons. For proper spinal health, um, for proper load transfer, for ideal performance, um, and, and even for ideal posture. So let me just, uh, let me, now we know the hip, hip flexion extension, the pelvis also moves. So the pelvis can tilt forward and backwards. So if it tilts this way, this is anterior pelvic tilt. And if it tilts this way, this is posterior pelvic tilt. So anterior tilt, posterior tilt. And the lumbar spine here, when it rounds over, this is flexion and then this is extension, and then when it goes past anatomical position, this is hyperextension. So if you notice, when the lumbar spine, when these get further apart, when they spread apart, what you notice here is that you're going to be putting more pressure, see the front, uh, the anterior portion of the vertebrae, they're going to be pinching together. And this is why you see a, a little herniated disc here. These portions pinch together, you know, so you've got a, a, an approximation on the anterior side and a, a distraction on the posterior side. And that is going to cause the nucleus to exert more pressure rearward. And you get the most herniations in a posterolateral fashion right there. And that's what happens with too much lumbar flexion is you can get herniations there. All right. On the flip side, when you have lumbar hyperextension, as you can see here, you're going to get these posterior elements of the spine that jam together. And this is dangerous for the whole posterior portions of these, um, the, the, the lumbar vertebrae. And this is dangerous as well. And this can lead to chronic, injur uh, uh, chronic injury and pain as well. So you want the lumbar spine to be pretty neutral. Um, you want to control too much flexion and too much extension is a bad thing. So. Let's talk about how this applies to exercise. Let's say I'm going to do a squat or a deadlift, all right? I'm in the bottom of a squat here, like this, or a deadlift like this, the bottom of a deadlift, okay. So this would be what my, my posture would look like. Now, when you teach proper deadlift mechanics, what you want is you don't want them just rounding over like this, you know, rounding over. This is what they want to do. And that's how people screw up the deadlift. They want to be like this and just torque at their back like this and lift all with their back. But you don't let them. You teach them how to hinge at the hips like this. But at the bottom of a deadlift, you want to maintain a slight anterior tilt. Just slight, not too much, because then you get too much lumbar hyperextension. So you want a little bit of anterior tilt. You want lots of hip range of motion. And then you want this the, the lumbar spine in neutral. So you're going to do a deadlift, a little bit of anterior tilt, that helps keep the neutral posture, and then you rise up. Okay, same with a squat. You come down in the bottom of a squat, 
you know, a lot of people have poor mobility or even problems with their, the, the, the hip joint itself, and they're pulled into posterior pelvic tilt, which pulls you into lumbar flexion at the bottom of the movement. But assuming you have good mobility and good stability, you can go down deep. What your spine wants to do down here is kind of round. You don't let it. You keep this anterior pelvic tilt, and you come up. So the squat and the deadlift, if you know the biomechanics behind the squat and the deadlift, they are hardest in this hips flexed position, right in here. They're hard right here, and as you rise up, as you come up, they get easier and easier. You know, people can quarter squat a lot more weight because it just gets easier and easier. Uh, uh, torque loading diminishes. This, the, the squat and the deadlift, they have a, an ascending strength curve, meaning you're weaker down here and you're stronger up here at the lift, and that's because of the loading of the, the torque loading of the joints. Torque loading is highest here on the hips and also the lumbar spine, and then it reduces as you rise up. Okay, so the deadlift and the squat are the best exercises for teaching good lumbopelvic hip mechanics in this low position. If they can do this, you know, in, with heavy loads, on their, on their back or in their hands, this is a good indication that they have very good functioning lumbopelvic hip complex um, you know, mechanics. Well, but the top range is not overloaded. You know, if you're standing here in a squat like this with a bar on your back, you're not really loaded too much through here. The bar is centered right over the hips and it's, it's, you don't have a, lot, a large moment here. You don't have a large hip moment or even that large of a lumbar spine moment compared to down here. Down here you have about this, the, you know, the, the moment arm is huge and that is going to create a lot more muscular contraction in here and you're gonna, these muscles are going to clamp down and create way more compressive loading and you've got more shear loading, but up top it's a little bit easier. So for the hip joint, if you want strong hip extensors, the squat and the deadlift uh, strengthen it from a hips flex position but they don't do a good job of strengthening the hips extended position. And the squat and deadlift do a really good job of teaching lumbar pelvic stability in a hips flex position, but up top they don't stress that. They don't maximize the functioning of that. Okay, this is where other exercises come into play. Now let's talk about the hip thrust and the back extension. All right, when I do a, a hip thrust, okay, I'm down here like this, and I rise up, okay? This is what a hip thrust looks like. Okay, with the hip thrust, how do people screw up? Just like with the deadlift, people screw up by flexing their spine, you don't let it. The deadlift is a dangerous exercise. You wanna go into lumbar flexion, but you don't let them. You don't let your patients, you don't let your clients, you teach them how to control that and keep a neutral positioning while lifting heavy loads around the hip joint. All right. The opposite can be said for the hip thrust. When you do a hip thrust, all right, I'm down here, people rise up, okay, and they come up and they extend, they extend. Now all of a sudden, they want to hyperextend here at the spine, and they want to go into anterior pelvic tilt here, but you don't let them. You are going to make sure that they push through the glutes, they move at the hips, and they keep this in a neutral position. So how do you make sure they keep this in neutral? You want a slight posterior pelvic tilt up top. You don't want to be uh, hyperextended like this. You want a posterior tilt up top. And this helps hold that neutral position. So what muscles are responsible for the posterior pelvic tilt? The glutes in this, in this situation. So strong glutes will protect the spine. So again, the hip thrust. Extend, extend, extend posture tilt just a little bit to keep this neutral position. So, the bottom of a deadlift, you want some slight anterior pelvic tilt, just slight to keep that neutral position. The top of a hip thrust, you want some slight posture pelvic tilt to keep this neutral position. And that is optimal lumbar spinal, uh, sorry, lumbopelvic mechanics, but you want the motion, most of the motion occurring at the hips. All right, the hip thrust has way more, way more uh, hip extension torque loading in this position right here, okay? Whereas the squat has the most right here. It, by the time you get to here in a squat, you've got no torque. With the hip thrust, 
you've got the most torque loading right here at end range. It's the hardest at the hip joint. So if you want to maximize end range hip strength, you need to be doing the hip thrust and also the back extension, which I'll go over in a minute. And, uh, and also for teaching proper lumbar uh, pelvic mechanics, you need to be, for this range, for this hips extended range, you need to be doing the hip thrust because that's where this functioning comes into play. All right, now let's go over the back extension. The back extension, you're kind of locked in here, and what most people will do because they hear it called back extension, they want to feel it in the low back. So they will kind of fix their hips and pelvis and just rotate all in the spine like this. And this is what their back extension looks like. Lumbar flexion, lumbar hyperextension, well, you, not just lumbar, you got the total spinal flexion, spinal hyperextension. And that's not a good, uh, good, that's not good mechanics. What you want to do, it's really hip extension. It really should be called the hip extension. And you want to, you want to make sure that the lumbar spine stays pretty neutral and you're just moving at the hips. Moving at the hip joint just like that. Now, up top, in the back extension, you want, again, you want to make sure that you're not in excessive anterior pelvic tilt because that, that anterior pelvic tilt and, and lumbar hyperextension are associated with each other, just like posterior pelvic tilt and lumbar flexion are associated with each other. So, when you get to the to very top of a back extension, you want to make sure that you're in a little bit of posterior pelvic tilt right here just to prevent that hyperextension here. So just make sure that you're, again, anterior tilt is this way, posterior tilt is this way. You, and a lot of people, again, you'll test their function. You'll, you'll tell them, I want you to show pelvic motion like this and they don't even know how to do it. This, this is very common with people. They don't know how to move their pelvis. They don't have good motor control at the pelvis. So, now let's talk about how this applies to, to everyday life and, and to sports. All right, when people pick heavy loads off the ground, they're doing, it's the, the best exercise for teaching that would be like a deadlift, okay? But when people are carrying loads like this, all right, Farmers walks, deadlift squats like that, it's important to have, you know, strength like that, but hip thrust will make this range strong. When you're sprinting, for example, all right, during gait and sprinting, during gait, you know, right up here is thigh reversal. This is not ground contact. Ground contact happens right in this range here. And, you know, probably different angles for different people, but say it's around 30 degrees of hip flexion, to around neutral or hyperextension right there. It's all in here, you know? This is where you're producing ground reaction forces, horizontal forces that will pr push you forward. So if you want to get better at sprinting, get this range really strong. What is the hip, what hip exercises get this range the strongest? Again, it's hip thrusts and then the back extensions, all right? So in sports, we're not always in this flexed position we're up here more, more upright and, you know, we're in this more hips extended range of motion. So whether you're accelerating or stops, top speed sprinting or even cutting side to side, you're not always bent over so much. So you need to get total hip strength and total lumbar spinal, uh, lumbar pelvic stability. And so this is why you need a variety of exercises. And I came into the scene and, and kind of strength coaches put so much of an emphasis on squatting and deadlifting, which is this hips flex position, and this works great for strengthening here, but as you rise up, it leaves some room on the table right in here. You're not strengthening this to a full degree. And so then you complement those with the hip thrusts, which strengthen this range of motion the most, and the back extensions, which are hardest right here, you know, um, and then you get total hip strength, full spectrum hip strength. And that's how you, you create kind of optimal lumbo-pelvic hip functioning by getting the hips th strong through a, a full range of motion, but also by using good form, because the good form in the lumbar spine and pelvic region are what provide that lumbo-pelvic stability while you move at the hips. So I kind of say still do your squats and deadlifts to get strong in this range. Add in hip thrusts and back extensions to get strong in this range. 
and now you've got synergy there. You've got your bases covered. So if you want full range, uh, uh, total lumbopelvic hip complex functioning, you need to do a variety of exercises. You need the flex position exercise, the squats and deadlifts, and the extended position exercise, the, the hip thrusts and back extensions, and then you're going to produce the best athlete. You're going to have the, lower, the lowest incidence of low back pain, and you know, you're going to have um, better posture, and you need, the, you need a variety of these exercises to produce the best athlete. That's all there is to it.